the time value of money part one. I'm going to start with talking about the differences or the difference between financial assets and other assets and then move on to how to value financial assets. Mathematically we'll begin with the future value, calculating future values, and then in the next presentation we'll get to calculating present values. Now there are a lot of definitions for financial assets, but I think we should start by looking at the other assets. You may be familiar from accounting class what, uh, that there are two types of assets that you account for, tangible and intangible assets. Tangible assets, well, tangible is a word that's a fancy word that means you can touch it. So tangible assets are those that you can see, touch, and use in a normally physical type of way. Intangible assets are those that have value in their use, but you can't touch them in the normal sense. So software, patents, and for acquisitions, goodwill, these kinds of things, trademarks also, they all have, they are examples of intangible assets. So now in comparison, financial assets are those that do not have a value in use. Rather, they represent a legal right to future amounts of cash. Actually, to be exact, it would be future expected amounts of cash because the cash is rarely guaranteed from an investment. How to value them? Well, if you don't have a value in use in, your, in the asset and it's really only a basis, the basis for financial assets are those expected future cash flows, then it follows that the value is simply today's best estimate for those future expected cash flows. So writing it down mathematically, you have value equals the sum, that, that sideways tipped over letter M is just the Greek letter S, the sum of the present value of those cash flows. Now we'll get back to the calculation of these cash flows or the present values, um, but I think it's better to start because it's more intuitive. Now, if you were to lend me $100 and I promised to pay you a 10% return after one year, then how much would I owe you after that time? In other words, after that year. Well, you would calculate the interest simply by taking the amount times the rate per period. So the interest would be $100 times 10% equals $10. So then I would owe you the $10 plus the $100 back. Remember, of course, I owe you the 100 as well. The answer is not I owe you 10. I owe you 110. Looking at this visually, at time zero, the cash flows from your perspective, so you would invest 100. I have the arrow going down because as a, from a purely mathematical point of view, the cash flow from your, from your point is minus 100. And then in year one, you will receive plus 110. To some definitions, the $100 would be the present value, the 10% would be the rate, actually the rate per period, and the 110 would be the future value. So using those terms, the equation would be future value would be the rate times the present value plus the present value. That would have been the 10 plus the 100. Factoring that out, you end up with present value times 1 plus r. So the 100 is basically your present value, and the 1 or the 110 after one year is your future value. Now, if I borrow the $100 and keep it for two years, how much would I owe you at that time, at the end? Now you would be able to simply calculate that from the interest. The interest is the amount times the rate times the time, and you come up with 20, and then I would end up owing you the 20 plus the 100, which I have to return, so 120. Now that 
is called simple interest. So that's quite straightforward. The amount times the rate times the time is the calculation of your interest. However, finance and valuation are based on a concept called compounding. So what does that mean? Let's revisit our the same example of where I say, where I borrow for two years. I borrow for one year, and then I hand you the 110 at the end of the one year that I owe you, and then I immediately ask, oh, I still need that 110. Can I borrow it for another year? Now, how much money am I borrowing and in the second year? And how much interest then do you get? Sorry about that typo. The second year I'm borrowing 110. In other words, the interest on that amount is 10% of 110, so $11 is what I would owe you in interest for the second year. So added together with the interest in the first uh, year, you can, uh, you can see that the amount that I would owe you at the end of two years would be 121. Calculated from the point of view of just one year, that means the future value is the 110 that I owed you, that I borrowed in year at the end of year one times 10% plus 110, so I owe you 121. The extra one dollar you earned compared to the calculation that we had done previously called simple interest is due to compounding, and the compounding is quite easy. Simply, you can look at it as the interest on the interest. So the $1 is the interest on the $10 from the first year. Now, let's look at the math of that. We already have present value, the rate, and the future value. Now I'm going to add the time in terms of numbers of periods. So if we add the subscripts to the future value, that allows us to denote the time as uh, future value one, sub one, future value sub two, which means the future values after one period or two periods. We were talking about years here. So that's future value in period year one, year two. Now we have present value, rate, time, and future value after two years. Bringing that around, we have future value 2 equals 10% times 110 plus 110, 110 being the value after one year, future value 1. So that is the rate times future value 1 plus future value 1. Again, factoring that out, you end up with future value 1 times 1 plus rate. It looks very much like the equation for the uh, amount after one year compared to year 0. This is the same thing after two years compared to year one. But now we already know that future value at one year is equal to present value times one plus r. So that means the future value two equals future value one times one plus r. Replacing future value one, you have present value times one plus r, and that all times one plus r. Simplifying it out, you get present value times 1 plus r square. Now, using the same reasoning, future value 3 would be future value 2 times 1 plus r, which is, of course, present value times 1 plus r square, and that all times 1 plus r. Again, gathering terms, you see that's present value times 1 plus r to the power of 3. I think you'll notice a certain pattern here. And so the general form would be future value at any given time is present value times one plus the rate per unit time times the number of periods of it. So T is the number of periods and R is the rate per period. Now, using the values that we've had so far, but increasing the time by one to three years. Then you have future value three is present value times one plus r to the power of t. Calculating that out gives you a result of 133.1.
looking at that on a timeline, you have 100, again, the arrow pointing down because you're investing 100, you're paying 100 in, at time zero, and then three years later, so you will be receiving 133.1. Now, what would be the case if you lend $100 for three months instead of three years, and if the rate is 10% 10 per, 10 per month instead of 10% per year? If you think about that, from a mathematical point of view, you'd see that it's the same, because the only thing that's changed is that the rate is 10% per month instead of per year, but the number of periods will have remained the same because we have three months instead of three years. The only thing is, of course, if you're lending me money at 10% a month, I must be desperate and you must be um, some type of uh, money lender uh, that uh, uses strict enforcement methods involving baseball bats. Okay, so you'll see that the calculation will end up the same, and that's something to keep in mind. So T, which I will probably change uh, as a subscript, uh, as a uh, superscript to N, because I don't want you to consider T being the number of years, but it's actually the number of periods. So just keep that in mind when we move forward with the math. Thank you for your attention, and I hope that helped.